Welcome again to another video lecture. Uh, in this video, we'll discuss government grant. So, PAS 20 or Philippine Accounting Standards 20 provides the rules or standards in accounting for government grant. Yeah. So, what is a government grant? So, a government grant, according to PAS 20, paragraph 3, a government grant is an assistance no, by government in the form of transfer of resources to an ent entity in return for part or future compliance with certain conditions relating to the operating activities of the entity. So, technically, uh, by the definition itself, uh, government grant, ito yung mga uh, kumbaga assistance, no? assistance by the government to the entity to compensate uh, that entity's expenses or uh, to compensate that entity's future compliance uh, with regards to certain conditions attached to the grants. Ayan. Now, government uh, grant, no? sometimes or sometimes called by other names such as pwede siya tayo subsidy, subvention, or premium. Ayan. So that's the definition of government grant. Now, uh, when do we recognize and how to measure a government grant? So, a government grant, including non-monetary grant, uh, is measured at fair value. Shall be recognized when there is reasonable assurance that okay letter a the entity will comply with the conditions attaching to the grant okay so dapat pag may condition you recognize the grant kapag si entity will comply with that conditions and then the grant will be received of course no? it will be received in some future time now, note, it shall not be recognized on a cash basis as this is not consistent with GAAP. So, technically, we recognize grant actually as income, no? uh, depending on whether the future or the condition has actually been um, met no? or complied with. Ayan. So, kung may mga expenses tayo na, na incur before and... Uh, the, the the government subsidizes such expenses so we automatically recognize the grant receiver's income but if it is a future compliance of a certain condition then you recognize the grant as income not on a cash basis but based on uh, the timing no, of the related uh, asset yeah. uh, it's a depreciation Okay, kung ilang years ba uh, natin gagamitin yung asset related to the grant. So, we recognize also the government grant as income over those years. Yeah. So, classification of government grant, we have two. Uh, we have grant related to asset and grant related to income. When you say grant related to asset, uh, it is uh, whose primary condition is that an entity Qualifying for the grant shall purchase, purchase yan, construct or otherwise acquire long-term asset. Okay, kapag related siya sa asset, uh, it has something to do with the purchase or uh, construction or acquisition of long-term asset. For example, uh, you have to buy building, oh, tapos... Uh, my government grant no or my grant to government yung uh, sa, sa entity to compensate no the cost uh, to purchase the building ayan when you see grant related to income naman uh, this is the grant other than grant related to asset so kapag hindi siya grant related to asset it's grant related to income so accounting for government grant so government grant shall be recognized as income on a systematic basis over the period in which an entity recognizes as expenses the related cost. So, siyempre, di ba? Uh, ang, ang, ang government ay, or ang government grant, by the definition itself, it's to compensate no? uh, for the cost 
that uh, may have been uh, incurred in the past or uh, may be incurred or will be incurred in the future. So, yung mga cost na yun, syempre, uh, pwede siya gradually marirecognize into expense. For example, when you purchase building or when you purchase long-term asset, the cost of that building or uh, no, property plan or equipment will be recognized as expense over its useful life. So, the government grant related to that cost will also be recognized as income on a systematic basis. Again, uh, again, over the period in which an entity recognizes its expenses for which the grant has been provided. Ayan. We have illustration. So, an entity received a grant of 15 million from the national government for the purpose of defraying safety and environmental expenses over the period of three years. So, ito yun siya, no? Uh, for the first year, we have 2 million. Second year, 3 million. And then, third year, 5 million. So, technically, ito, itong 2, 3, and 5 million, ito na yung mga expenses that uh, the entity, or that the, uh, yes, that the entity will incur, no? For environmental expenses over these three years. Okay? So, according to PS20, a, a grant in recognition of specific expenses will be recognized as income over the period of the related expenses. Okay, so over the period of the related expenses, kung three years mo marirecognize yung expenses or may incur yung expenses, three years mo din i-recognize as income yung grant na na-receive mo to compensate that expenses. But of course, on a systematic basis, hindi siya divided by three. Based, of course, on the uh, expenses incurred that year, relative to the expenses incurred for the entire uh, for, for three years no so again the grant is allocated as income for three years in proportion to the costs incurred amounting to 15 million so to compute okay we have here no uh for the first second and third year we have 210 310 and 510 so saan pa natin kinuha yung ratio na yan so kinuha natin yung ratio na yan dito that's 2 plus 3 plus 5, that's 10. So each year, gawa ka ng ratio, that's 2 over 10, 3 over 10, 5 over 10. Okay? So we have here, no? And then, since the... Okay, so since 15 million yung marireceive natin or ng entity as grant, okay? Uh, yan na yung magiging, ano niya, 15 million multiplied by the ratio that we came up before, that's 2 over 10. 3 over 10 and 5 over 10. So, ito na yung allocation na income that the entity will recognize during those uh, particular years. No? So, the joint entry would be for the first year, that's going to be a debit to cash and credit to deferred grant income for 15 million. Kasi that's for the amount received. Ayan. And then, for the recognition of the income for that year, as computed here, that's 210 times 15 million. Then we have 3 million. So we recognize the deferred grant income as grant income no, na 3 million. And then, of course, uh, syempre may na-incur no, yung entity na expense na 2 million for that year. Uh, environmental expenses. So debit lang ng environmental expenses, credit ng cash for 2 million. Okay, illustration number 2. <clears throat> so an entity received a grant of 50 million from uh, the Australian government for the acquisition of a chemical facility with an estimated cost of 80 million and useful life of 5 years. So the grant related to depreciable asset shall be recognized as income over the periods and in proportion to the depreciation of the related asset. Okay, accordingly the grant of 50 million is allocated as income over 5 years. Okay? Uh, depending <coughs> on the method of depreciation. So, as you can see, uh, naka-receive siya ng grant na 50 million. Okay? Uh, here. No? Receive siya na 50 million for the purchase of a facility na may cost na 80 million at saka 5 years yung useful life. So, itong 50 million, i -re recognize niya yan as income over 5 years depending on 
the method of depreciation of the 80 million uh, acquired facility. Okay? So, as you can see, uh, debit tayo ng cash, credit deferred grant income for the defer, uh, for the grant income received. The next entry, of course, is uh, for the purchase of the building, no? Or acquisition of the facility. So that's a debit to building, credit to cash for 80 million. And then, uh, uh, depreciation, okay, that's gonna be debit to depreciation, credit to accumulated depreciation for uh, 80 million divided by 5 years. Kaya we have our <coughs> depreciation here for 16 million. And then of course, lastly, is the entry to recognize as income or as grant income the government grant received. Kaya we have here 50 million, okay, divided by 5 for 5 years. Kaya we have deferred, uh, we have grant income as recognized na 10 million. Okay? Yeah. So as you can see, no, nire-recognize natin as grant income, yung income, uh, yung grant the government grant received relative to uh, system, uh, re relative to how or relative to the timing na nire-recognize natin as, co as expenses yung cost. Okay? So, yung sinasabi niya na cost dito is the building. Okay? Cost for, uh, of the building acquired. Nire-recognize niya as expenses, of course, that's uh, depreciation na. No? As depreciation expense. So, din, yun din yung magiging method of recognizing as uh, grant income the government grant receipt. So we have here illustration number three. An entity is granted a large tract of land in Mindanao by the national government. So the fair value of the land is 60 million. The grant requires that the entity shall construct a refinery on the site. So the cost of the refinery is estimated to be 100 million and the useful life is 20 years. So, the grant related to non-depreciable asset or non-depreciable asset, ito ha, kasi nga, land, di ba? Requiring fulfillment of certain condition shall be recognized as income over the periods which bear the cost of meeting the conditions. Accordingly, the grant of 60 million is allocated over 20 years. So, yung na-receive niya is land naman. So, debit land, credit, Deferred grant income for the amount, uh, fair value at 60 million. And then, ito yung la land na na-receive niya is, of course, dapat uh, lagyan na, uh, dapat mag-construct na siya ng refinery. Okay? Into the land. So, the, the cost of which is 100 million. Sir, anything. And then, 20 years though yung uh, useful life ng refinery o oh, depreciation, accumulated depreciation for 5 million. That's 100 million divided by 20 years. And then for number four, we have deferred grant income and grant income of 14 years. That's 60 million divided by 20 years. Ayan. Illustration number four. An entity gr uh, received grant of 50 million from the U.S. government to compensate for massive losses okay, uh, incurred because of a recent earthquake. Now, if a grant is received for an already incurred expenses, PS20 states that a government grant that becomes receivable as compensation for an expense or losses already incurred or for the purpose of giving immediate financial support to the entity with no further related costs shall be recognized as income of the period in which it becomes receivable. And accordingly, the grant of 50 million na eto Okay, uh, yung 50 million, dahil related siya sa expenses na incurred na in this case, yung losses due to recent earthquake, o dahil na incurred na yan, o yung grant na ba-receive natin, automatic recognized as income. 50 million. Ayan. Next, presentation of government grant. Okay, so grant, o government grant related to asset, including non-monetary grant at fair value, shall be presented in the statement of financial position in either two ways. So, dalawa actually, no? <clears throat> By setting up 
the grant as deferred income. So, yung ginagawa natin from the previous uh, illustrations. Diba, ginawa natin siyang deferred grant income upon the receipt okay, of the said grant. Now, the second one is, kapag related to assets siya, by deducting the grant in arriving at the carrying amount of the asset. So, kung magkano yung cost of the asset acquired or constructed mo, yung na-receive mo na grant will be deducted from that from the cost of the asset. Okay? Kapag itong number, letter B yung in-apply. Now, government grant naman related to income is presented as follows. So, kapag grant related to income, the grant is presented in the income statement either separately or under the general heading other income. And alternatively, the grant is deducted from the related expenses. Kung hindi siya related to asset but related to income, ito yung magiging uh, option no, for presentation of the of that grant. Now, illustration. At the beginning of the year, an entity purchased an equipment for 5 million and received a government grant of 500,000. With respect to this, the equipment is to be depreciated on uh, a straight line basis over 5 years. The estimated residual value of the equipment is 200,000. Now, pwede natin sa deferred income approach and deduction from asset approach. No? So, to record the acquisition of the equipment, Kapag deferred income approach, that's gonna be equipment, credit cash, 5 million. To record the government grant naman as deferred income, debit cash, credit deferred grant income for the amount received, 500,000. And then to record the annual depreciation, we have 5 million na cost of the asset minus 200,000 na residual value eto, 200,000. Yeah, 4.8 million divided by 5 years is for life. That's 960,000 yung annual depreciation. And then for uh, this one naman, to recognize government grant as income, okay, so that's gonna be deferred grant income and credit grant income for 100,000. Kasi that's 500,000 na, govern, uh, na grant received divided by 5 years, okay, over the life of the related asset. Now, if it is a deduction from asset approach naman, so, yung mangyayari is, uh, the same pa to record the acquisition of the equipment. Uh, now, to record naman the government grant as a deduction from the cost of the asset, that's gonna be debit cash, credit equipment. Diba? Hindi tayo, kasi hindi siya, really, uh, hindi siya uh, deferred grant income approach, no? Dito, uh, deduct, uh, yung na-receive natin na grant ay dinididak natin sa cost ng asset na in related to the grant. Okay? So, to record the annual depreciation, okay, we have a computation here, no? So, we have acquisition cost na 5 million minus yung grant na na-receive natin kasi it's, that's gonna be a deduct, the, uh, that's gonna be deducted from the asset, cost of the asset. Okay, 4.5 million net cost minus residual value na 200,000. Kaya we have depreciable amount na 4.3 million. So our annual depreciation is 4.3 million divided by 5 years. That's 860,000. So depreciation, credit accumulated depreciation for 860,000. Ayan. Okay, so we have here sample problem on January 1, 2014. Valiant Company received a grant of 60 million for cost incurred in planting trees over a period of five years. So the entity will incur such cost at 2 million in 2014, 4 in 2015, 6 million in 2016, 8 million in 2017, and 10 million in 2018. What amount of grant income should be recognized in 2015? So we have here now, uh, ito yung uh, cost or expenses na may incur ni Valiant for the uh, planting of trees. No? Yeah. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I-add mo lang yan lahat, you have 30 million total expenses. So gawa ka ng ratio to recognize the uh, to recognize the uh, as income no? the grant received in each year. So yung nangyari is that in 2015 dahil 
4 million yung uh, ma-incur na expenses in planting trees. So, the ratio is 4 over 30 times 60 million. Okay, so times 60 million na nag-grant na na-receive. Therefore, the grant income that will be recognized in 2015 is 8 million. Okay, so with regard ito, so with regards to the question, the answer should be letter B. Yeah. Okay, next, sample problem on January 1, 2014, Calvin Company purchased a plating machine for 5.4 million. The entity received a government grant amounting to 40,000 towards this capital cost. So the machine is estimated to have a 200,000 residual value and is to be depreciated on a 20% reducing balance over 10 years. Now the policy is to treat the government grant as a reduction from the cost of the asset. What is the carrying amount of the machine in December 31, bakit pa yung 2015, ayan. So, yung mangyari, yung mangyari is nagbili siya ng machine, the cost, the cost of which is 5.4 million. Nakareceive siya ng grant related to that machine na 400,000. And may 200,000 na residual value. And then, the deposition is 20% reducing balance over 10 years. So, ganito lang yan. No? Uh, the question is, what is the carrying amount of the machine in December 31, 2015? So, ganito lang yan. You have cost of the machine na 5.4 million. Okay, as stated in the problem. Ito. Less mo yung government grant kasi nga yung policy niya is uh, deducted from asset approach. Okay? Yan. Uh, deduct, deducted for the reduction from asset approach. So, deduct mo siya from the cost of the asset. So, the net cost of the asset is 5 million. Okay? So, the question is, the carrying amount in 2015, di ba nag-purchase siya in 2014? Yung tanong is the carrying amount in 2015. So that's gonna be uh, two years no, from January 1, 2014 to December 31, 2015. So for 2014, the accumulated depreci the, the, the depreciation would be 5 million times 20%. Kasi 20% reducing balance yan siya, yung depreciation over 10 years. So if that's the case or if that's the method of depreciation, multiply mo lang si 5 million, the net cost. No? So we have 1 million na depreciation in 2014. So dahil declining balance siya, yung 5 million na cost, net cost, minus depreciation in 2014 na 1 million. So the net carrying amount in 2014 is 4 million na lang. So yun na din yung magiging basis for the depreciation in 2015. No? So that's gonna be 4 million times 20%. The depreciation in 2015 is 800,000. So we have 1.8 million total uh, accumulated depreciation for 2014 and 2015. So 5 million minus accumulated uh, accumulated depreciation for two years. So we have 3.2 million as the carrying amount of the equipment on December 31, 2015. Now you might be asking, bakit hindi dinidak yung 200,000 the residual value? So we have not discussed yet depreciation, but Kapag yung depreciation method natin is declining balance method, in this case, 20% uh, declining balance, we, de uh, we, we disregard 200,000 uh, as residual value or kapag declining balance method yung ginamit natin as dep depreciation method, we, re we disregard the residual value no, in computing the carrying amount of the uh, asset, depreciable asset. Kaya dito, dinis ni Gardo, hindi natin ginamit sa 200,000. Okay? Yeah. Now, we're done with accounting. Okay, we're, we're done with uh, how to recognize the government grant as income. This time, uh, let's talk about repayment of government grant. What if repayable siya? So, syempre, yung government grant natin or yung government grant, may mga condition yan siya. Na-receive yan ng company or ng entity, uh, but the entity must uh, you know, meet the condition. But what if may na-violate siya na condition? Oh, it, it may become repayable. So a government grant that becomes repayable because of non-compliance with the conditions shall be accounted for as a change in accounting history. Okay? A repayment of a grant related to income shall be applied first against any amortized deferred income and any excess shall be are recognized immediately as an expense. So, kung meron daw tayong an amortized na deferred income, kung naka-deferred income pa siya ba, hindi pa siya tinanggal, 
uh, the repayment shall be first direct, uh, sh sh shall apply first to the amortized in deferred income, and then the rest shall be expensed, no, or recompensed expense. A repayment of a grant related to an asset shall be recorded by increasing the carrying amount of the asset. Uh, kapag related to asset tayo, no? And the cumulative additional depreciation that would have been recognized to date in the absence of this grant shall be recognized immediately as an expense in that year or during the year that uh, the grant becomes repayable. So, mas nagi, uh, it becomes challenging here kapag yung repayment natin is related to a grant and yung approach na ginamit is deduction from asset approach. Okay? Sige. Uh, may mga illustration tayo, no? Now, kapag grant related to income siya, for example, on January 1, 2020, identity received 6 million as government grant to compensate for cost to be incurred in planting 100 trees every year in a reforestation over a period of 3 years. So, 2020 yan, pagka January 1, 2021, one year later, the entire amount of the government grant became repayable because the entity has never planted trees in 2020 which is a clear non-compliance of the condition attached to the grant. So, the journal entry is, uh, for January 1, 2020, that's the debit cash, credit, deferred grant income for 6 million, okay, the amount received. For December, on December 31, 2020, of course, uh, kailangan natin i-recognize yung deferred grant income for that year, no? that 6 million divided by 3 years, kaya 2 million yung grant income for that year. Now, in January 1, 2021, naging repayable siya because hindi nga siya nagplant ng trees pala. So, that's a non-compliance. Kaya naging repayable. So, on January 1, 2021, yung, def yung balance ng deferred grant income natin is 6 million minus nag-recognize tayo on 2020 na 2 million. Kaya yung balance ng deferred grant income natin is 4 million. So, kapag repayable na siya, i-close muna natin una yung deferred grant income na unamortized na 4 million, that's 6 minus 2, that's 4 million. So, yan ang muna natin i-apply, no? Debit. And a credit to loss on repayment of grant na 2 million. And then we paid cash, no? Na 6 million. Ayan. Okay? That's grant related to income. Kapag repayable siya. Another illustration, kapag related to asset. Okay? So, depende siya, no? Uh, this one, Ano siya? Deferred grant income approach. Yung next illustration natin is kapag deduction from asset approach. Ayan, wala na siya label. Basta, uh, this illustration is a deduction, uh, a deferred income approach. Okay? Sige. On January 1, 2020, an entity received 50 million as government grant related to a building that is purchased on the same date or at a cost of 25 million. So, the useful life of the building is 10 years with no residual value. Ayan. So, January 1, 2022, the, the entire amount, so that's gonna be two years after, no? The entire amount of the government grant became repayable due to lack of compliance with the conditions attached to the government grant. Now, again, this is a deferred income approach. So, the entry would be debit building credit cash for 25 million. The amount uh, incurred not to purchase the date, or the, the, the building. Ayan. And then, debit cash, credit Deferred grant income. Kasi nga, nakareceive siya ng government grant na 5 million. Okay? 5 million. Ayan. And then, on December 31 is the depreciation. Okay? That's 25 million divided by 10 years. Wala namang binigay, no? Na uh, residual value. Okay? Now, hindi natin, uh, the depreciation is based on the 25 million na cost. Kasi nga, this is a, uh, the government grant he received is a def, uh, we use the deferred grant income approach. No? Ayan. So, yung depreciation niya is based on the cost talaga. And then, the deferred grant income will be recognized also over 10 years. Okay? Kaya yung 5 million na government grant divided by 10 for 10 years, that's 500,000 depreciation every year. Now, in 2017, um, Okay, so may ano pala, may, may uh, discrepancy sa year. No? So the year should be 2016, 17, and 18. No? So this should not be 2020. No? Uh, change natin. Okay? Ayan. So for 2017, the same pa rin yung magiging depreciation natin. For 2.5 million. 
Okay, depreciation, accumulated depreciation at 2.5 million. Yeah. And then the deferred grant income, 500,000. Now, as we all know that in 2018, naging repayable siya because of a violation of certain conditions in the grant. So, uh, wala tayong problema kasi hindi naman sa reduced carrying amount, no? or reduced cost yung uh, reduced yung building ng cost natin hindi kasi naka deferred grant income tayo. So walang problema sa depreciation natin 2.5 million pa rin. 2.5 million pa rin. And 'di ba yung deferred grant income natin is 5 million. Nagrecognize na ng 500,000 in 2020 uh, 2016. Tapos another 500,000 in 2017. Okay? So uh, 1 million na yung na-recognize natin as grant income. So, yung deferred grant income natin na 5 million minus 1 million. So, 4 million na lang yung balance. Niya. So, 4 million yung i-close natin or apply natin as to the, to the an amortized deferred grant income by debiting that account. No? 4 million. And then, credit, uh, debit to those on the payment of grant na 1 million. Credit cash kasi 5 million man repayable. Fully repayable man siya. 5 million. So, yung loss natin is 1 million. And the depreciation is still the same. Okay? Now, to get the carrying amount of the building on December 31, 2018, that's gonna be 25 million minus uh, accumulated depreciation na. Ayan. So, this is not 2 million. This should be 2.5 million yung depreciation natin no? every year. 2.5, uh, 2.5. So, we have 7.5 million. That's not 2 million. Ha? This is 2.5 million. Okay? Times 3. That's 7.5 million. So 25 million minus 7.5 million. The carrying amount is 17.5 million on December 31, 2018. Now, what if naman kapag deduction from asset approach? Okay, so kapag deduction from asset approach, ganito yun, no? Ah, yung na-receive natin na grant na 5 million, that is deducted from the cost of the building. Kaya upon the receipt no, of the grant, we credited building na 5 million. So, yung depreciation natin for the building is 25 million cost minus the grant received kasi nga deduction from asset approach. So, 25 million minus 5 million, we have 20 million a depreciation, uh, na depreciable amount. Divided by 10 years pa rin, kaya we have 2 million. And credit accumulated depreciation for 2 million. Now, in 2017, wala na tayong i-recognize na deferred grant income. In 2016, wala. Kasi, uh, dinidak naman natin siya as, uh, from the cost of the assets. Wala nang deferred grant income. It's just that lumiit na yung depreciation natin dito. From kanina na 2.5 million, ngayon 2 million na lang kapag deduction from asset approach. Uh, so, wala na tayong mag-ibang entry in 2017 but the mere depreciation na 2 million. Okay? And in 2018, kasi nga naging repayable, naging repayable, binayara natin yung nagbayad tayo ng 5 million. So, kaya we debited back building na 5 million and we're credited cash na 5 million for the repayment. And in back natin sa sa cost ng building. Now, yung depreciation natin dito is naging 3.5 million. Bakit? We have depreciation on original carrying amount. Di ba yung original uh, depreciation on original carrying amount is 2 million tayo. So, 2 million. Remember na in back natin to building yung amount na binayad natin or for the repayment of the grant, in back natin sa cost ng building na 5 million. Okay? So, kung uh, the, the depreciation for December 31, uh, 2018, no, the, the year where uh, when the uh, grant becomes repayable ay meron tayong increase depreciation on the increased carrying amount. Diba nag-increase yung carrying amount niya ng 5 million due to the repayment. Okay? So that's gonna be 5 million divided by 10 years times ilang year na ba from the receipt of the grant until December 31, 2018. That's 2016, 2017, 2018. That's 3 years. No? Kaya 5 million divided by 10 times 3 years. Okay? So that's 1.5 million. So 2 million minus 1.5 million the total depreciation for 2018 becomes 3.5 million. Again, depreciation for the original carrying amount. And then, yung sa 5 million. So, hindi tayo magre-recognize ng depreciation for starting 2018 lang ha. Kuna natin or magre-recognize ng depreciation as if walang grant. So, yung 5 million na yan, may depreciation yan sa from 2016 up until 2018.
que he dicho es trillas. Vale, va a 10 times trillas. 3.5 million. Now, as you can see, yung carrying amount natin dito as computer is 17.5 million pa rin. No, 17.5 million. Walang paibahan yung carrying amount niya kapag deferred income approach and uh, uh, no, uh, deferred income approach in the deduction from asset approach. No? So, the same lang siya actually. Yan yung magiging carrying amount. Yan. And we have 17.5 million pa rin dyan. Okay? We have sample problem here on January 2014. Easy Company received a government grant of 1.5 million to subsidize tuition fees for a period of five years. On January 1, 2016, the entity violated some conditions on the grant and therefore had to repay full such grant to the government. What amount should be recognized as loss resulting from the repayment of the grant in 2016? Okay? So to compute, we have here, uh, the total grant received is 1.5 million. Okay? January 1, 2014. Naging repayable siya on January 1, 2016. So two years after. So yung 1.5 million na yan, uh, yung 1.5 million na received niya, Siyempre, i-recognize niya dapat yan for 5 years. So, divided by, divided by 5 years. At dahil, 2 years after lang, so 2 years lang din siya, or 2, 2 years after, naging repayable yung grant. So, 2 years lang din yung income na na-recognize niya, no? So, that's 1.5 million divided by 5 years, that's 300,000 times 2. The income recognized is 600,000. 1.5 million minus 600,000, the deferred grant income balance on December, uh, January 1, 2016 is 900,000. So, to recognize the repayment or to record the repayment, that's going to be deferred grant income for the 900,000 and recognized. And a loss on re uh, repayment of grant is 700,000. And a credit to cash for the 1.5 million. Okay? Now, kapag, uh, ano naman, deduction from asset approach such as, no, this problem, Tiger Company received a government grant of 600,000 related to a depreciable asset acquired on January 1, 2014 for 6.6 .6 million. This grant was deducted from the cost of the asset with a useful life of 10 years and the residual value of 500,000. On January 1, 2016, the grant became fully repayable due to non-compliance with the condition. What is the depreciation expense to be recognized in 2016? Ayan, so this is a deduction from asset approach. So we have here the solution. We have a cost. Uh, what is the cost of the asset? 6.6 .6 million. Minus grant na 600,000 kasi deduction from asset approach you have the net cost na 6 million minus 500,000 o oh, hindi naman ito double declining straight line method man ito so we record uh, we we, we re, uh, deduct residual value from the cost to get the depreciable amount na 5.5 million now yung useful life niya is 10 years kaya divide 10 you have 550,000 as original depreciation okay and that is in January 1, 2014. Naging repayable siya in January, uh, on January 1, 2016. So, the cumulative additional, ito talaga yung original depreciation. No? So, and uh, the question is the depreciation expense. So, the depreciation expense uh, in the year that the grant became repayable. So, original depreciation, 550 pa rin, di ba? Kaya lang, dahil in 2016 naging repayable siya, mayroon tayong increased or additional depreciation. So that's gonna be cumulative additional depreciation that would have been recognized this year. No? So that 600,000 na grant na na-receive niya, okay, divided by 10 years kasi hindi lang tayo mag recognize ng depreciation for the uh, increased carrying amount during the starting the year na, na naging repayable yung grant but at the beginning of the year that the grant was received. Okay? So 600,000 divided by 10 years pa rin multiplied by from 2014 to end of 2016. That's three years. Okay. Kasi yung tanong niya is depreciation ex, uh, expense recognized in 2016, man. So that's from January 1, 2014 to 2016. Na increased carrying amount. Depreciation on the increased carrying amount. Kaya nag times three tayo dito. Okay, so that's 180,000. So that's 550,000 plus 180,000. The depreciation in 2016 is 730,000. Okay. Now, uh, let's discuss naman uh, grant of interest-free loan. No? So, sometimes, may uh, nagpapa-loan ano, nagpapa yung uh, government to 
the entity no or to businesses uh interest free okay so a forgivable loan from government is treated as a government grant when there is reasonable assurance that the entity will meet the terms for forgiveness of the loan so ps20 paragraph 10 provides that the benefit of a government loan with a nil or below market rate of interest is treated as a government grant so kung yung uh, interest na pinapataw no ng government to a loan uh, for a loan to an entity is wala or below market rate oh, that said is uh, a government grant pa din. paragraph 10a naman further provides that the benefit is measured as the difference between the face amount and the present value of the uh, loan no? granted to uh, the entity oh, illustration tayo on january 1 2020 an entity received an interest-free loan from the national government for 5 million. For a period of 3 years, yan siya, no, by a promissory note. Ayan, so 5 million yung loan, interest-free. So walang interest for 3 years. Ayan. And then the market rate of interest for a similar loan is 5%. So the present value of 1 at 5% for 3 years is 0.8638. Ayan. So, technically, yung ginagawa natin dito is kinukuna natin ng present value yung 5 million. And yung applicable interest rate daw for a, a similar loan is 5%. So, we use 5% then to discount or to get the present value of the 5 million in 3 years time. Okay? Uh, on January 1, 2022, uh, January 1, 2020, 2020, 2021, 2022, January 1, 2022. Magiging repayable sa January 1, 2023. So, ayan. So, kunin natin yung present value niya na 5%. So, the government granted the interest-free loan provided the entity shall employ at least 40% of the workforce from the area, area yan, where the entity is located over the next three years. So, the difference between the face amount of the loan and the present value is recognized as a discount on notes payable and granted income to be amortized over terms of the loan of three years using the effective interest method. Effective interest method yung ginamit or yung gagamitin natin dito. So, we have table here no, of computation. That's date natin, January 1, 2020, uh, December 13, 2020, 2021, and 2022. So, yung loan natin is, the present value of the loan is 6 million, uh, 4 million, 319,000. Okay? So, paano ba natin kinuha yung 4,319,000? So, ito. The present value on January 2020 is computed by multiplying 5 million, the face amount of the note, by the present value factor na 0.8638. So, we have 4,319,000. Yan. So, technically, yung ginawa natin is, actually, yung government grant dyan ay... Ah, uh, eto muna, no? The, the amortization of the discount minus present value times interest rate, no? So that's present value times interest rate. So that's amortization of the discount. So technically, yung difference ng 5 million, ha? We have here 5 million, di ba? Face amount of the note. Yung present value niya after it is multiplied by the present value factor, that's 4,000,000. The difference of 5 million and 4 million 319,000 is actually 681,000. Yang 681,000 na yan, that's the government grant. Okay, yan yung ating government grant. 681,000. And yung 681,000 yan, nire-recognize yan siya as expense over 3 years by uh, amortization method. No, So, paano ba? That's 4,319,000 multiplied by uh, 5%. O, eto, 5%. The government grant or the government grant that should be recognized as income in 2020 is 215,950. Again, paano kinuha? That's 4,319, the present value of the note multiplied by the interest rate na 5%. You get 215,950. Yeah, 215,950 na yan. I-deduct mo yan sa discount on notes payable ng 681,000. Ito yung nare-recognize mo as income in 2020. Ito naman yung balance ng deferred grant income mo in 2020. 464,050. 
Okay? Tapos yung 4319 na yan, i-add mo si 215,750. I get the present value on December 31, 2020 as 453,490. Yung 4,534,950, yan naman yung multiply mo by 5% to get the uh, amortized interest or discount which is at the same time the, 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 uh, to be recognized as grant income in 2021. That's 226,748. Si 226,748, i-deduct mo yan sa 464,050. You get 238,302 na balance of the discount on notes payable. At si 226,748 na amortization or the income, the deferred, uh, the, the, the grant income in 2021, added to 4,534,050 na present value in 2020 to get the present value in 2021 na 4,761,698. Ayan. And then, uh, for 2022, the final year, the third year, yung balance ng discount mo, bring down mo na lang siya dito, yung 238,302, bring down mo na lang siya. Huwag mo nang i-multiply kasi nga it will have a difference of a couple of hundred pesos, a hundred pesos. Uh, due to rounding of factor. Kaya, i-round, eh, ano mo na lang, bring down mo lang dito. And then, si 238302, i-add mo yan sa, sa si 4761698, you get 5 million. Okay? As the present value. Which is actually the face amount na din of the note on January 1, 2020. Yan. Okay? So, that's how you get the, or you uh, compute, no, the deferred grant income using effective interest method kapag yung grant is uh, that of an interest-free loan or uh, a loan that has an interest below its market rate. Okay? Yeah. So we have here journal entries. Ito na yung mga journal entries natin relative to uh, this uh, grant, no? Government grant. Yeah, interest-free loan. Yeah. So on 2016, we have, of course, debit to cash. Okay, for the amount received, 5 million. Credit to notes payable na 5 million. Yung discount on notes payable natin na 681. As computed here, eto, 681,000. May 681,000 tayo. And a corresponding deferred grant income na 681,000. Okay? And then yung discount on notes payable natin, nare-recognize natin yan sa 2 interest expense na 215,950 on in 2016. Okay? Ito yun, 215,950. And at the same time, that is the same amount that will be recognized as grant income. So itong deferred grant income din natin, de debit natin for the, to recognize the grant income. So credit grant income for 215,950. Okay? And in 2017, interest expense, debit, credit, discount, or notes payable for the amortization of the discount or notes payable, that's 226,748. Ito. The same amount din ang i-recognize natin as grant income. Okay? Now, in 2018 naman, that's a debit or amortization of the interest expense of the discount pa din to interest expense, that's 238,302. Ayan, 238,302. The same amount will be recognized as grant income. And then, upon the payment na talaga on December 13, 2018, that's three years na, of the note, that's 5 million. Okay? So, disclaimer lang yung mga amounts dito, uh, uh, yung mga date pala, this should be 2016 no? and uh, this, uh, the, the third year, is uh, it should be 2018. Okay? So, dates lang naman yan. Yeah. It's a journal entries. The payment na yan of the note uh, at the end of the uh, no contract, no? that's 5 million. Debit note, payable credit cash, 5 million. Okay, we have your government assistance. No, is action by government designed to provide an economic benefit specific to an entity or range of entities qualifying under certain criteria? So the essence of government assistance is that no value can reasonably be placed upon it. Examples of mga government assistance: free technical or marketing advice, no provision of guarantee, government procurement policy that is reasonable for a portion of the entity's sales. Okay. So, government assistance does not include the following indirect benefits or benefit not specific to an entity. Ito, infrastructure or infrastructure, hindi naman yan specific to a certain entity. 
lahat yan, maka, lahat ng uh, entities makaka-benefit sa, sa infrastructure. No? In development area, in developed areas, no? such as improvement to the general transport and communication, imposition of trading constraints and competitors, improved facilities such as irrigation for the benefit of an entities or entire local community. So lahat nakaka beneficyo sa mga to. So this is not govern uh, it does not it is not government assistance. Ang mga government assistance ito lang specific to the entity but no value can reasonably placed upon it. Ito A B and C. Okay? And a uh, disclosure about grant or government grant. So the accounting policy adopted for government grant including the method of presentation adapted to the financial statements. So, yung policy ba is a deferred income approach or the deduction from asset. The nature and extent of government grant recognized in the financial statements and the indication of other forms of government assistance from which the entity has directly benefited uh, and fulfilled conditions and other contingencies attaching to government assistance that has been recognized. And uh, note also that if not required to disclose the name of the government agency, that gave the grant along with the date. No? So, hindi siya required no, na, na i-disclose in the notes to finance statement the name of the government agency na nagbigay ng grant. No? And of the grant by such government agency and the date when cash was received in case of monetary grant. Ayan. So, that's it for the government grant. I hope uh, you learned no, something from this video lecture. And that's it for this.